Hi, welcome to Canfield and Company. I'm your host, Rob Canfield. I'm here with my camera person, Tana Canfield. We are on the road for this show. We are here at beautiful Trillium Lake with beautiful Mount Hood in the background. This is really a beautiful spot. Trillium Lake at Campground, this is beautiful. It's a beautiful spot and it's not far uh, from government camp. As you can see, Mount Hood uh, is right behind us. Spectacular views of a Mount Hood. This campground is awesome uh, because of its scenery. Here's how you get here. It's 40 miles east of, southeast of Portland and uh, you can do all sorts of things here. You can go boating, swimming, and there's a trail that goes all the way around the lake. It's a great place to hike, especially on a nice summer day like this. And it's got dozens of sites for camps, campers, tents, and RV. And you want to reserve a site early. You'll want to reserve a site early because it's a very uh, popular park. One of my favorite spots uh, is this lake. When the kids were little, we took them camping here quite a bit. And I'm going to tell you a story of what happened. We had a dog, Jack. He was a wonderful, wonderful uh, dog. I want to tell you a story about a camping experience I had uh, when our kids were little. We had a dog, Jack. He was, he, was a, he was a mutt, really friendly guy. And he loved to play hide and seek with the kids. So we would all go out and hide. I would tell Jack the dog to stay in our campsite. And then we would go hide and he would find us within a matter of minutes. Well, one time we hid and he, we called him. He wouldn't come. We thought, he's not trying to find us. What's going on? So we went back to the campsite. The dog wasn't there. He didn't stay for once. So we all started yelling, Jack, Jack, where are you, Jack? After about three or four minutes of yelling this out, we heard from a campground in the distance, Oh, is this your dog? Oh, we've been feeding him hot dogs. So, yeah, he was a popular dog, and of course, he liked hot dogs. So I strongly recommend you coming to Trillium Lake. It's a beautiful spot, and uh, Tan is going to pan the camera around so you can take a nice view of the, of, the, uh, of the lake. The sun's coming up right now. Really is beautiful. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get out of the way a little bit so Tan can show you the beautiful, beautiful mountain. Isn't that beautiful, folks? It's really, really, really beautiful. We've got the uh, fog and the mist going over the lake right now. It doesn't get any better than that. There's the sun coming up. We'll be back right after this with another story on uh, Cantil and Company. Welcome back to Canfield and Company. We're on the road this show. We're at beautiful Trillium Lake, which is about 40 miles east of Portland, right across, as you can see, from beautiful Mount Hood. We are at Trillium Lake, but I'm going to talk about a story in uh, Troutdale. There's been a lot of talk about extending the Springwater Trail through Troutdale, and there have been some public meetings on the subject. I moderate a Facebook page called We Love Troutdale, and I recently put a, put a question in We Love Troutdale for everyone who was interested to answer is, what do you think about the Springwater Trail? Do you want it to go through our city? And here are some of the responses we got. And I've kept, I have kept the folks anonymous who made these comments on the Troutdale Facebook page. They didn't give me permission to use the names, but I'm going to use their quotes, okay? Here's the first quote. Uh, 
quote, I've heard talk of extending Springwater Trail through Troutdale to the Sandy River. If this happens, it, I think it will be a huge mistake and bring more crime to the city. Another fellow wrote, um, I agree about crime homeless, but I would love a run bike area in which I don't have to worry about cars hitting me. But we do need the city to stick to vagrancy laws in our city. Another, another person uh, said, and I quote, this would only be the case if we don't address a problem by offering consolidated services for those who want to get off the street and enforcing laws regarding camping for those who don't. Now, there are, this guy says there are already plenty of homeless people in Troutdale, which is true. So saying it would bring them here implies they aren't here already. But he says also a hundred mile loop that connects bikers, runners, and people who like to enjoy nature would bring thousands of people a year to Troutdale that never may see this amazing city. Another person said, and I'm quoting here from the We Love Troutdale Facebook page, no to any addition to the Springwater Trail, though I love these types of trails, I fear that sooner or later the transient population will begin to find somewhere to roost. This person says he patrols downtown Portland and encounters transients daily, and Portland sooner or later is going to drive them out and move them closer to Troutdale. And he says, our city leaders, which I'm thinking he's referring to Troutdale, our city leaders are weak, and I regret to say I will not take any action until the situation is here. So those are some of the quotes uh, from people who commented on the We Love Oregon Facebook page. Some of the points are valid, and I think some extra care needs to be taken on this, and folks, you need to contact Metro especially, who is responsible for this project, to voice your opinion for or against the Springwater Trail. Okay, that's it for this topic, and we'll be back right after this with another topic on the road with Canfield and Company. Hi, welcome to Canfield and Company. We're on the road this show. We're in beautiful Thai Valley, Oregon, which is home to the Wasco County Fair. That's right. Happens right here at the Wasco County Fair coming up. You know, Thai Valley is considered by uh, some to be the beginning of the Barlow Road, which went over Mount Hood. Uh, wagon trains cross the Deschutes River at Shears, which is the, quite a chore if you've ever seen the, where the uh, Deschutes River is. It's quite a chore. And then they proceeded west. They, they bypassed the Dalles. So it was an overland route instead of going down the river. So I'm going to tell you a little story about our experiences at Thai Valley. When I first started dating my beautiful bride, Tana Canfield, we went rafting with some folks from... Uh, AT&T, a bunch of us went to AT&T, and then uh, we ended up camping here at the Thai Valley Campground. And I wanted to give Tana, being on one of our first dates, I wanted to give her a great time, show her what it's really like to be an expert camper. So I checked everything on the, off the list, checked it twice. We got here camping with some other folks from AT&T with us, some other great gals from AT&T. So we started, we started dinner and I was going to make spaghetti with spaghetti sauce and it was going to be just fantastic. So I got the stove out, got the spaghetti out, started cooking the spaghetti and I looked around in the supply bin, supply bin. I forgot the spaghetti sauce. Oh yeah. So Tana wasn't all that thrilled with me, 
but she and the other ladies from AT&T, but she was hungry. She was really hungry. We'd been rafting all day. She was ready to eat, but I forgot the spaghetti sauce. You know what I did? I started saying, well, we could eat the noodles dry, but Tana said, oh, no, we're not. We're not going to eat them dry. So she and the gals from AT&T, they went driving in the middle of the night. It was 10, 10.30 at night. Dark. It was pitch black, and they drove all around the roads. They tried to find anything, even a ponky tonk a restaurant. So finally they found a cafe, which is actually just down the street a few miles from here. And they asked the uh, cafe owner, hey, could you spare some spaghetti sauce? And what do you say, Tana? Um, yeah. Um, well, I said I'd pay for it. I'd pay whatever. So I think we paid like eight dollars or something. Yeah. So Tana said, sh Tana said, please may I buy some spaghetti sauce from you? And the guy said, well, sure. You can buy the whole spaghetti dinner. So Tana said, okay. Well, we'll buy the spaghetti dinner, but just leave out everything but the sauce. So she came back, I think it was 11, 11 o'clock by then. So the bunch of us, we sat around, we had a campfire, we sat around and we had spaghetti with spaghetti sauce and I think actually they had some soup. We poured over the spaghetti too, some stew, we poured over the spaghetti. So that was, uh, everybody was happy, everybody got their tummy filled. And so I showed Tana what a great expert I was at making sure I had everything, everything when you go camping. I think she was impressed. I was. Not. So we'll be right back just in just a minute for a little bit more about Thai Valley. Hi, we're back. We're back. Canfield and Company on the road. We're here in beautiful Thai Valley, Oregon at the Thai Valley Campgrounds. You know, in uh, just a few weeks, they're going to have the famous, and I mean famous, Wasco County Fair. Mm -hmm. What happens in Thai Vegas stays in Vegas. That's their theme this week. It's August 18 through the 21st. It's the one event that they say transforms Thai Valley, and literally thousands of people will come here. They've got a great rodeo in town. There's lots of music and family-friendly entertainment. Two exciting nights of a great rodeo and they've got the 4-H'ers here. 4-H fun. They have all the 4-H groups here and also on Sunday they're going to have a demolition derby. So this is going to be a happening place. You should all come out and enjoy the beautiful weather out here, beautiful scenery here in Thai Valley. I mean it really is beautiful out here. So again August 18th to the 21st, the beautiful Wasco County Fair and Rodeo right here in beautiful Thai Valley. We're at the fairgrounds. So we're going to be right back after this with some more e Canfield and Company on the road. <music> Hi, welcome back to Canfield and Company. We're on the road on this show. We are in beautiful Thai Valley, Oregon, which is home of the Wasco County Fair and Rodeo. Even though we're in Thai Valley, I'm going to talk again about the Springwater Trail. We talked a little bit about 
Troutdalians' comments on their opinions on Springwater Trail earlier, but now um, I'd like to talk a little bit about why people think the Springwater Trail is a concern. Now, it's estimated that uh, 500 folks, 500 homeless people, have been living on the Springwater Trail for six months or even as long as two years. And this trail spans Multnomah and Clackamas counties and it connects Gresham, Portland, and Milwaukee. Now to give a, paris a comparison, you've got 500 folks living on the Springwater Trail. Multnomah County estimates there are over 1,800 people were sleeping on the streets at least in 2015. Now there's a lot of controversy concerning whether or not the uh, what's going to happen to the folks if they're evicted from the Springwater Trail, what's going to happen. Uh, the Reverend Steve Kimes, he runs a day, uh, three day a week shelter uh, off of Gleason Street in Portland. He thinks that the clear out of the Springwater Trail is not exactly a good idea. He, he considered it a form of like a whack-a-mole. You know, they, they move them from one place, let's say Gresham, and then they all move back to Portland. Portland moves, scoots them out to Gresham. So he thinks it's not a good idea. He says, um, both Gresham and Portland are using the same tactics to move the homeless people, and all they're doing is moving the homeless from one portion to another. Now, Kime says he thinks that's better solutions that exist. Instead of, for instance, clearing out a whole group of homeless people, that perhaps the police should investigate and pick out the homeless people who are causing the trouble first, and I think I agree with that, and then have the social service agencies, the churches, the county, then help the other folks who are not causing trouble, help them find services and perhaps get them into shelter. And uh, instead of just making them, kick him, kicking the can from one place to another, as he said, doing a whack-a-mole thing. I think that's a better solution than just keep uh, kicking him from Gresham into Portland, Portland into Gresham. I mean, you, you can't really uh, solve a problem if you're just moving the folks. So we'll be right back after this with another uh, more Canfield and Company on the road. And that's it for this episode of Canfield and Company. Thanks for watching the first show that we did on the road from Oregon. Next time you are in Central Oregon, be sure and visit Molly B's Diner, 82657 Main Street, Thai Valley, Oregon. For more information on the Wasco County Fair, visit the website shown on the screen. The last stop on our on-the-road visit was to White River Falls State Park, so we're going to leave you 
with some wonderful scenery from those waterfalls. If you'd like more information on the park, go to OregonStatePark.org. That's it until next time. Thanks for watching.